really like it, but I'm also disappointed. This is the 2023 version of the Hilux Rogue. It's wider, it's beefier, it's $80,000. Are you better off getting the SR5? Or are you better off spending a little bit more and getting the GR Sport? All of that plus off-road and on-road testing. Is the wider wheel track that much better? Inside to outside, the pros, the cons. <laughs> my thoughts and have they fixed the issues i used to have in my 2020 sr5 hilux only one way to find out Zero to 100 test. We are in sports mode and three, two, one, here we go. Well, it felt pretty impressive. I was in sports mode. How does this thing handle on the highway? I would honestly say exactly the same as the SR5. Driving around town, you can definitely feel the wider wheel track as you're going around corners and stuff, especially if you're really giving it to it on the corners. It does seem to track and grip and take the corners better than the SR5. But apart from that, it feels exactly the same. You're probably wondering why I'm checking all the wheel nuts. You should always check your wheel nuts after changing tires. This is my mate's car. Sean lent me this and he had put some nice wheels on it. But I want to do the proper test drive with the stock wheels that it comes with. Tire pressure, we've gone down to 16 PSI. These are 18 inch alloys, which I'm not really fond of. Last time we were out here, we test drove a Ranger. We did a tire and a rim. Hopefully I don't do this on the Hilux. All right, let's get in and chuck it into full drive. How do we get this beast into four wheel drive? I've showed this before, so I'll do it really quick. Foot on the brake, start it up, it's an automatic. With four wheel drive, you can be in drive or park or anything and it can put it into four wheel drive. Four wheel drive low, however, into neutral, push in, select four wheel drive low. When you're in four wheel drive low, you don't have to disable any traction controls or anything like that because that happens when you put it in low range. When you go back to high range, your collision sensors and all that are turned back on. Just be aware of that. All right, let's see what this bad boy can do. Kind of expecting the same thing, really, but while the wheel track might actually behave differently off-road. I hope so. I'm just approaching the exact point I did a tire last time and a rim on the 2023 Ranger. The Rogue being the up-spec model with off-road suspension, labeled as the off-road vehicle, why are they putting 18-inch alloys and really weak road tires on these vehicles. I don't understand it. Just give people an option and make it actually four wheel drive, not bloody piss weak road tires. I don't understand it. It's not just Toyota, it's every manufacturer. Every manufacturer. Aside from that, the gravel road handling was good. Really comfortable, really quiet. Couldn't hear any stones flicking up. climbing this hill oh man that's a big hole <laughs> it's always that little bit of nerve because you're borrowing a car right when it's your own car it's a bit different get out from these other drives because they're so light and snappy awesome the big steep dune test see how this goes Come on, no go. Round two. Belling out, eh? Round three. We're in sports mode, give us a crack. We got further this time. Nah. Round four. Hey! <laughs> We made it. All right, well, it made it up. It took four goes, but we got there. I was belling out five places. I was doing a soft sand run on the beach. Let's see how it goes. It seems to handle the soft sand pretty good. It's just where you belly out because of the small tires, you know? 
Suspension wise, slightly more clearance to the body, but I think the suspension feels pretty similar to the SR5. <laughs> it is soft down here. Nothing like the bitch will be in good WA. It's pretty soft. It does have pretty good grip on the beach, I'd say. Yeah, it just wants to keep going. <laughs> Get a bit sideways there. Eh? What I will say is when you're really ripping it to the left or right, it does handle a bit better grip wise. You don't feel like you're going to be tipping as much. That is one thing I've just noticed. So there's a couple of times I've done that and it feels really stable. It does make a difference off road, that wider wheelbase. This is a lot of fun to drive. Here we go. Rear locker is engaged. Oh! What am I hung up on? Try and take locker out because then I've got traction control. Let's see what that does. Control's trying. Here we go. That's amazing. This is one case where a rear locker hinders a vehicle to drive up. So the interesting thing that happened there was I turned the locker off to get better traction. That sounds completely ridiculous, right? It's counterintuitive. The thing is, because this only has a rear locker, when you turn the rear locker on, it disengages the traction control function. It's like a traction assist off-road. In low range, it's really, really good. There are other vehicles out there, like the Jeep Wrangler, has a really good one that works in the background. This has one of those as well. However, if you put in the rear locker, it overrides the whole system. And the rear locker only assists the back of the vehicle. The back was hung up, so it was relying on the front to try and pull itself out. But because I had the rear locker in, the front was just not working. Getting the locker out, then turn that function back on, and that's how the front of this vehicle just gripped itself and pulled itself out. If they had a front locker in this as well, no problems. Front rear locker, it'll do a better job than the traction control would itself. Just something to know, if you've got this vehicle and you've got the rear locker in and you, you just can't get out, try and turn it off, try again. And Toyota, if you're listening, perhaps on the next model, give it a front locker as well, or make the system work with the rear locker engaged. Can't be that hard, surely. All right, Johnny is almost a standing start. Oh, I think I got this. That was impressive. That was impressive. Does the wider wheel track make this better going downhill? Got the rear locker engaged. I normally do that when I go down a sand dune or a hill. And nice and easy. Oh. It's really lumpy here. It's like an ocean with <laughs> lots of waves. Feel like being on a boat in rough seas. It does give you a core workout driving on that, that's for sure. Yeah, is that enough fun? Whew. Here's a chucksy around a bit here. Let's go back for more punishment. Oh yeah, that's unpleasant. Very unpleasant. <laughs> I need to go to the toilet now. Time for a quick whip around. What is new on the latest Rogue? It's wider. It's 140 mil wider. The axle's wider. The body's wider. Some wider flares. It looks way better than the previous Rogue. I really did not like the look of the previous Rogue. The SR5 does not have this whip. The research I've done, you can only get the wider version in the Rogue or the GR Sport. More on that later so you can make up your mind which is the actual better option. The SR5, the Rogue, or the GR Sport. Anyway, let's keep moving on. 2.8 litre four cylinder engine paired up with a six speed automatic. I had this exact engine for two years. I can tell you it packs a lot of punch. This has the same amount of torque and power. So the kilowatts are 150, SR5 is 150 as well. And the torque is 500 Newton meters and the SR5 was exactly the same. 
difference. And it feels exactly the same when I drive this. I didn't tune my one either. I don't think it needs a tune. I just to tow with it. These engines actually push out quite a bit of power. One thing though, with the six speed gearbox, if you upgrade your tires, you are not going to use six gear very much. If you go up to a 33, which are illegal anyway, you will not have six gear ever again. Bye bye six gear. You are gonna put bigger tires on this, thick to 30.5 inch, 32 at the max, any bigger, you're gonna burn more fuel and you're not gonna reach that last gear. In low range, you'll find the gearing is really hard. It really grabs the gears. Exactly the same, SR5, Rogue, even this new one, same. You know about the wheels, 18 inch road tires, not off-road tires. I'd say that's full stretch on the Hilux, Rogue. As you can see, these road tires are no good off-road. That's 16 PSI and look how much they bag out. They're at risk there. As you can see, this type of tire doesn't like to be very low. This is 16 PSI. You go a proper tire, you can get it right down to like 5 PSI before they look like that. Behind the wheel though, they have upgraded the brakes. I can tell you that they they definitely stop. Oh yeah, they said they put a bigger brake disc on it. Yeah, they ventilated 17s and it stops i'll tell you that when you take them off road they're really harsh so you really got to feather that brake even if you feather it actually if you're going down with a bit of momentum geez you, you just get abs straight away when you're off road in the previous hilux that i had i did not notice that at all they bite and they will stop the rear brakes have also been upgraded around the back of the rogue we have a roller shutter <laughs> that's what i'll call it anyway i'm curious Anyone who has one of these, who's had it to the Australian Outback, does that still work? Because I'll be concerned about dust and stuff. Hey, it might be fine. Hilux unbreakable, right? But yeah, I have my slight concerns about this lasting out in the Outback. Carpet, which I thought, why is there carpet? Because it's gonna get dusty and dirty. But wait, we have a dust seal. I had trouble keeping dust out of my Hilux. 20, 20 PSI. Yep. Holy dooly, someone has a dust issue. A very bad dust issue. And I know for a fact that that short drive we did in on that gravel road, this will be dusty and white. It's not. This seal is actually working. I'm quite impressed. One thing I'm not impressed about though, there's no struts on the back door. I installed some of those on my previous Hilux and this has caught me out twice. You know, you open it and it just drops. Pretty cool out of lights though. If you do have this roller shutter thing, it does rob you of a bit of space back here. One thing I will say, we stopped for lunch and I sat on this carpet. This is the most comfortable tailgate I've ever sat on. It offers a bit of cushioning. They've widened the wheel track, but they haven't widened the tub. Whatever you could fit in the previous tub and the SR5, you can fit the same in this one. You could sleep on this. It appears we have a technical error. What happens if I push you and do it? Welcome to the interior. This is very similar to the SR5, except for it has a way better sound system, but it kind of looks like an afterthought to me, having the speakers like that up there. Black carpet on the ceiling. The whole interior is blacked out. That is actually a really nice touch. I do like that. It's got leather seats, it's got heated seats. I will say there's plenty of room for kids. There's plenty of room for adults in the back. Like the SR5, it has six cup holders in the front. There's one over here, one in the door, there's two in the middle, and it's the same on that side. Sorry, kids, no cup holders except for in the doors. There's eight cup holders in this vehicle. Why haven't they given you USB chargers? So they're giving you two 12 volt Siggy plugs down here, which means you have to get a plug-in adapter yourself. I'm just curious why they did that. It's 2023. Time to see if Toyota fixed that issue I had with my old Hilux. So we'll go back to neutral and we'll put it into four drive high. There we go, beach run. As I'm going down the beach, if I'm going left and right, but the vehicle senses it's doing the opposite of what it's supposed to be doing, then it should, well, it shouldn't, but on mine, it'll fail all the sensors and it'll, you know, you'll have to go back to Toyota and reset it. It's a bit of a risk doing that because it's not my vehicle. I'm not sure if Sean's gonna be too happy with me, but um, 
he does need to take it back for the 1000k service so Sean <laughs> if it does it I'm sorry if it doesn't I'm still sorry for trying <laughs> so here we go driving one handed on the beach not recommend it let's see how we go Struggles and high range, I'll say that. Oh, sideways. Okay. They've fixed it. Good on you, Toyota. Now, if you guys can fix that, why don't you widen a diff on the new 70 series, eh? Why don't you widen a diff on the new 70 series? I really like this vehicle, I really do. And I think it's cool how they've widened the axle. The car looks awesome, and it's reminding me of how well the SR5 drove as well, except for this drives better when you're cornering with it, especially off-road. That surprised me. I honestly didn't think it would make that much difference. The disappointments, it's a brogue. Why no snorkel? Why 18-inch rims? Why road tires? It's the same combo you get on the SR5. I mean, you're paying more money for this, at least give people an option for a 17 inch rim maybe. When they widen the axle, they might have lifted it a little bit, but why didn't they actually give it like a two inch lift? Toyota suspension is good, it's just not sitting the height that a lot of people will want. I still like it, but I still think they could have done more. Anything else, it's just being nitpicky. So which is the best option? The SR5, the Rogue, or the GR Sport? You're likely thinking about it if you made it this far. First of all, the engine and the gearbox, exactly the same through the entire range, except for the GR Sport. It has an extra 10% power. So all they've done is they've tuned the vehicle, made it drive a little bit different, and likely just made the throttle a bit more snappy. Really, that's all they've done? I think that's pretty disappointing for a GR Sport to only give it 10% extra power. I mean, you could take that SR5 and go get it tuned, you know, like a reasonable mild tune, and you'll be doing way better numbers than the GR Sport, guarantee it. Although you will lose your warranty, but that's not what I'm talking about here. The other factor is only one of these options has the manual. If you want a manual in a Hilux, you have to go with the SR5. You can't get it with the Rogue and you can't get it with the GR Sport. I would have thought with a GR Sport, you could get a manual option. One other thing that does come with the GR Sport is paddle shift. Paddle shift is awesome. I love paddle shift. I was talking about paddle shift when I had the SR5 because I tried the Fortuna and that has paddle shift. It's just a, a cool extra feature. Diff lockers, they all have the same option, only rear. I don't understand why the, at least the GR Sport doesn't have a front diff locker as well. When we were out test driving, there was that one situation where the rear locker actually hindered traction control that was in the vehicle itself. However, if there was a front locker as well as a rear locker, it would have been no problem. So far, they're really not selling me the idea of getting a GR Sport over the others. But let's continue. GVM. GVM has been dropped by 50 kilos across the widening of the axle on the Rogue and the GR Sport. So the SR5 has a higher GVM of 3.1 tonne. Not that much of a big deal to be honest, it's only 50 kilos. But in the end, every kilo counts, right? And that leads on to the widening of the axle. The SR5 does not have it, and it doesn't seem like it's coming in future either, from what I've read up and what I've researched. Only the Rogue and the GR Sport has that wider axle. Towing, three and a half tonne across the board, all of them. However, if you are looking at towing, you may want to consider the Rogue or the GR Sport because it has bigger brakes. And I can tell you that Rogue really stops it's got really good pulling up power. A little bit too much for off-road. Let me take you on a roller coaster ride. If you're looking at these vehicles and you want to see the wheels they have, the SR5 and the Rogue both have 18-inch alloys. The exact same wheels, exact same highway tires. They are not off-road tires, as I've already mentioned many times before. The only difference is the Rogue has black wheels. Okay, when it comes to the GR Sport, this is where I got excited. 17-inch alloy Dakar style. Clever with the wording there. Dakar style, not Dakar spec. So just bear that in mind. We're coming down the roller coaster again because these tires that are fitted to that vehicle, they're labeled as all-terrains. But I can tell you, they don't even look like all-terrain tires. 
They're basically road tyres. So regardless, you are going to have to put decent tyres on this vehicle to take it off road. I mean, come on, GR Sport, labelling it with Dakar style wheels with all terrains, I don't buy it. I love Toyota, I love the cars they make, but this is disappointing. If it's for the looks, I guess some people will go to GR Sport. I mean, it's just the badge you're buying and an extra 10% horsepower. These two other vehicles with the wider axle, I mean, yeah, they look bloody awesome. They drive bloody great on-road, off-road, but it's not like the SR5 doesn't drive good. I think it drives great. So you tell me down below which you think is a better option because the GR comes in at $83,000, that's a lot of money. The Rogue comes in at $80,000, the SR5, $70,000. You're paying a lot more for a wider axle. Of course, these other two versions do look mint, I will say that. What do you think? SR5, Rogue, or GR Sport? And do you think Toyota have dropped the ball with the GR Sport? On that note, it's time to go.